Hello everyone. Welcome to a new A320 tutorial. In this one you'll learn everything you need to know about the D and anti-icing equipment available to us in the A320. In particular we'll have a look at how the engine anti-icing works. You can see that the uh, engine cowling is being heated by bleed air. We will see how the wing anti-icing works, in particular the fact that only slats 3, 4 and 5 are being heated by bleed air, while slat 1 and 2 are not. We'll have a look at the external sensors like angle of attack sensor, the static port, pitot tubes, TAT probe, all of them electrically heated. And last but not least we'll talk about the windshield heating. And please be aware that all the windshields are heated, not just the one highlighted. Another item actually heated on the aircraft are the water drains. They are electrically heated, uh, however they will not be covered in depth here in this video. Before we jump into the flight deck to have a look at all the controls, here's a quick overview of all the heated and unheated areas of the A320. Off we go into the flight deck and on the overhead panel you have seen it. We have a wing anti-ice push button, push buttons for the engine anti-ice and also a push button for the probe and window heat. So let's go left to right to explain the functions of these push buttons. So we'll start off with the wing anti-ice system. And again, there's only one push button for the uh, wing anti-ice for both sides. When that is selected on, the circuit closes, gets to the next option, either you are in flight or you're on ground. Usually you will be in flight, obviously. That triggers the impulse for the valve to open. Uh, so the right wing valve opens and allows um, hot pneumatic air from the bleed system of the engine to enter the duct system and hence uh, slats 3, 4 and 5 are then being heated. The other option would be on the ground, so when you select wing anti-ice on, on ground. Um, the system performs a 30 second test run. Um, you can't use wing anti-ice on ground all the time and the reason is very simple, it's because on ground you are missing the cold airflow um, and so the system which is designed for in-flight uh, anti-icing and de-icing um, will overheat on the ground and so obviously if you have ice, snow etc on the uh, leading edges on ground you would have the aircraft de-iced with uh, de-icing fluids and that's why until you get airborne you will be protected against ice. Here you can see the test run on ground in practice. So you, s you activate the wing at the eyes, the valves open, and then uh, they allow the wing at the eyes to be used for 30 seconds, and after 30 seconds the valves will close again. And so we still have agreement indicated in the wing at the eyes uh, push button. So the wing at the eyes is on. The valves agree by being open and now you can see a fault light indicating that the valves are closed and that no wing anti-ice uh, is available. Also be advised that when you select wing anti-ice on, the maximum EPR or maximum N1 is decreased and the idle N1 idle EPR is increased. The opposite happens obviously when you switch wing anti-ice off again. Be aware that the bleed air for the uh, wing anti-ice is taken off behind the uh, bleed shutoff valve. And that means if the engine bleed is switched off, then you cannot activate the wing anti-ice um, since there's no bleed air going into the wing anti-ice system. 
One last thing is that the wing anti-ice valves are electrically controlled, obviously, however, they are pneumatically activated. And that means if electric power is lost to the valves, the valves will actually close. That's all there is to say about the wing anti-ice. So next up, we'll have a look at the engine anti-ice. Now the engine anti-ice system uses uh, compressed air or bleed air from the high pressure compressor. And once the engine anti-ice valve is open, the hot air is being then fed into the front of the engine cowling and that's the area I've just highlighted here. And so that uh, front part is being heated and uh, either gets rid of ice which has accumulated on the front of the engine cowling or is uh, protecting it against ice accumulation. So one big difference uh, regarding the engine anti-ice is that the bleed air is taken off um, directly uh, from the compressor and so the bleed shutoff valve does not affect the anti-ice operation for the uh, engine. So as long as the engines are running, you will have engine anti-ice available. And contrary to the wing anti-ice valve operation, the engine anti-ice valve will stay open um, if the electronic control is lost to that valve. One thing in common with the wing anti-ice operation is that the engine anti-ice operation also causes the N1 idle value to increase while the maximum EPR N1 value is decreased. And the reason for that is uh, to accommodate for the higher bleed air demand from that engine. Right, that brings us to the last uh, item to look at and that's the probe window heat system. And as I've mentioned before, there's only one push button for both of these systems and these systems work pretty much automatically. So whenever the window heat switch is not illuminated, then the auto function is active, meaning that the window heat will come on automatically when at least one engine is running or when the aircraft is in flight. Now the windshield heating operates at two power functions. So it's a low power function on the ground and the normal power function in flight. And the changeover is automatically from the ground to the normal power. As mentioned before, the combined probe window heat switch is also responsible for the electronic control to the um, pitot probes, the static ports, angle of attack sensors and the total air temperature probes. The probes are heated automatically when at least one engine is running or when the aircraft is in flight. However, be aware that on the ground the total air temperature probes are not heated and the Peter heat operates uh, on the ground at a low level. And that changes automatically um, to normal power once the aircraft is in flight. And I guess it's needless to say that the low power function on the ground for the probe and the window heat is in order to avoid overheating. Now there is a function where you can select the probe window heat on manually and on the ground. That means that the windows and the probes are being heated at low power. And the reason for this is to get rid of ice and snow uh, contaminants that have accumulated during the transit on ground. Okay, so that concludes the video on the D and anti-icing systems available in the A320. And of course, I will publish another video very soon on how to use the wing and the engine anti-ice systems on ground and in flight. Until then, as always, have happy landings and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.